I would like to now introduce our very first speaker. And I'm very, very excited to um, introduce and like sort of kick off our, our event. It's actually like sort of like Miguel like Sanchez, sort of, sort of like Sanchez and amazing knowledge. Um, he's, he's basically a like textile engineer. He's worked for so many great comp sort of companies and he's currently the technology leader for actually Kingpins as well. Um, uh, Miguel, welcome, welcome. Thanks very much, Martin. First of all, let me thank uh, yourself, Mariette, Joan and Andrew for organizing this transformation in, in, in Amsterdam. Let's say we are in Amsterdam. And I want to thank also for uh, all the audience for attending uh, this show, wherever they are. So good morning, evening, whatever you are, and very welcome. So let's talk about denim. So um, like everything that uh, a living um, entity or industry uh, uh, is doing on earth is, is everything we do is is requires some inputs and, and and outputs so we are we require some things and we need some other things then is, is an is an industry is very complex industry you will see and we require uh, certain things to make it possible and at the same time we have to handle uh, some health products uh, that have been released during the manufacturing process uh, making denim is complex making denim fabric making garments is extremely complex it's not easy i, th I have the impression that um some people think that that genes grow on the trees or or uh, you know they are harvested somehow uh, this is not the true uh, a pair of genes at the store is the consequence of a multi-step very long process with additional complexity of um, that every step along the way may be done in a different place. So on the screen, you have a chart that was prepared by the transport uh, department on the Manchester University, explaining how a cotton plant is converted into um, a jeans that are sold at the end consumer. Um, on the screen, what you have is 24 steps, 24 steps uh, along the way to convert that fiber into, into denim jeans. And these steps can be summarized in the um, 12 that you are on the screen. And starting with the fiber, so we need to crop, produce, collect fiber, which has to be converted into yarn, into thread. Because we dye denim, we color denim, we start producing denim in yarn form. This is real denim. Then the yarns are collected, either in the form of what is called uh, bow warp, which is a rope, or another form which is called slasher, where the yarns are running in parallel, one to next, next to the other. Um, they can form uh, blankets, so more than 4,000 ends, 4,000, 5,000 ends to you know, be the, the base for the denim. This warp is pre-wetted, is, is treated with uh, chemicals uh, in conditions that all the impurities, uh, waxes and paraffins coming with, with an virgin cotton are removed so they don't interfere with the uh, subsequent uh, dyeing process. What you see on the screen, what they say warp coloring, indigo dyeing, is, is a box, but it's in the in technical terms called box. So basically it's a box <laughs> that contains a dye bath. In the case of the indigo, which is uh, pictured in the, in the, in, on the screen, is well, something around 2,000 liters box. And then you see what I mentioned before, the ropes. The ropes are these, you know, um, groups of ends that are across the, the box. Then after the, the dyeing, we need to, um, let's say, wash off all the unfixed dye stuff. We need to wash off all the chemicals that are not required any longer to be on the, on the yarn. And we fix, if required, the dye stuff completely to the fiber. Then we need to prepare the yarn to be woven. Uh, weaving is a very uh, stressful uh, process for, for fibers because it's heavy friction involved. So in order to prevent a fiber breakage, uh, peeling, hairiness, uh, all kinds of mechanical things, we cover the warp with a layer of what we call size. It's there are different kinds of starches. The, the basic starches are what you can imagine, potatoes and, and rice and mandioca and things like that. So once the yarn is, is um, protected, we go to the 
weaving. Weaving is uh, essential for the good look of a denim fabric. It's very, very important to have a very good fabric to have a very good garment at the end. What is depicted here is um, a shuttle loom that is uh, you know, used for salvage, uh, which is considered to be a, a classical style, the, 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 the real denim from the, from the origin. This fabric, after the weaving, uh, goes to the finishing. The fabric has to meet certain requirements so it can be converted into garments in an easy, in an easy way. So the fabric is treated with some uh, chemicals again to improve uh, lubrication, slippery, uh, and give some other mechanical properties. The garments are, the, are produced from these fabrics. Um, they are converted into many different styles. The uh, basic trims and buttons and zips and everything are added. And the garments, at that point, we call them rigid or almost rigid, they go for the wash down if so required. So what you see on the screen in the garment wash down is something that fortunately is not that usual any, any longer, is uh, a stone wash. So what you see in the hands of this uh, uh, worker is a bag of pumice stones that were used, still used, but they were used uh, as a standard for producing the classical stone wash. And then once the garment has been uh, washed and the look has been obtained, we go for the finishing. So we put the last uh, chemicals to give nice handle and drape or whatever kind of functional property required. And we also uh, make the embellishment. So we put some additional trims, we make uh, some final uh, spots, we add some uh, drops of oil if required. So anything, so the garment is, as the designer at the very beginning of the process, figure it out uh, probably when we reach that stage two years before. So as I said, this is an industrial activity and everything that happens on earth that uh, has to uh, you know, be a, requires a transformation, we need inputs and we generate outputs. When we grow cotton, we need, of course, we need land for the cotton, we need water for irrigation, and we need energy because we are using machines that are powered by energy. Then as a consequence of that, we generate residues we generate effluents that contain pollutants. On the spinning, we still use water and energy because the conditioning of the spinning room is very, very important for the efficiency. And then we generate residues in the form of lint, um, small fibers, and we generate emissions as consequence of the energy creation, energy generation, sorry, of converting. For warping is the same thing. We are treating the yard, we are treating a fiber, so we need water for conditioning, with energy to run the machines, so we are generating reduce and residues and emissions. Then when we go to the dyeing process and we go for the pre-weighting, things become a little bit more complex because then we start using water again, energy again, and then is when we call, when we are using, um, let's say, non-basic chemicals. Some of them are basic chemicals, but we, but we need, uh, you know, more sophisticated chemicals. We need uh, dyes and special specialty chemicals to obtain the, the, the depth, the yield, the, the look of the, of the dime. So we're generating effluent, we generate emissions, and we have uh, pollutants that are emitted in one way or the other. Normally that goes on the uh, effluent, on the final effluent. The dyeing, I call coloring because dyeing is only referred to dye strips, but then it can be colored using other type of materials like pigments, for example. So the, the technical term is, is coloring more than dyeing. The same thing, we need water, we need dyes and chemicals or pigments and chemicals here, and we need energy to run the machines. So we produce, we are producing as, a, as an output effluents, emissions, and pollutants again. The washing off is the same thing. What we're doing on the washing off is that, is removing everything that should not be on the fiber uh, for the, you know, for the rest of the process. So again, we have water, we need chemicals, we require energy, we generate effluent, we generate emissions, and unfortunately, we still have to handle with pollutants. That diagram that you see on the bottom is a very schematic look of uh, depicting what a, a, a denim colon range, dyeing range uh, looks like. These kind of ranges can be long, believe me. They are huge, huge ranges. Um, they can be 150 meters, 200 meters long, with many, many boxes 
uh, the machines are very high. Can, can, the, you know, the, 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 the work can go up to three, four stores high on the process. It's a really, really um, exciting <laughs> uh, machine to, to follow live. I mean, there's many things going on at the same time. Then we are, are preparing the warp, the light warp uh, to, for the weaving. Uh, and the sizing, we combine water with, again, uh, some chemicals. We require energy because this process is normally done at very high temperature. We are talking about 85, 90 degrees, which uh, requires emissions. In that case, we are not generating any effluents or, or uh, pollutants because uh, the warp is not washed off. All the size remains in contact with the warp. So we are just requiring emissions. The size is not washed off at that moment in time. The weaving requires, as anytime we are processing uh, fabric of fibers, water and energy, and we generate residues. The residues are again coming uh, on the form of, uh, you know, uh, yarns, lint, and some other materials that can be, and are currently, uh, re can be recycled. So it's, it's uh, something that is start generating a, a, a something that can be recycled for good. The fabric finishing is requiring again water and chemicals, they are or, <laughs> together, and energy because we run through ranges that are also requiring temperature to heat up uh, belts, uh, blankets. We generate effluents, we generate emissions, and also some pollutants. On the, oh, sorry. On the garment making, energy is the main issue because we are stitching uh, garments uh, using electric machines normally. And what is very, very important, and is a very important input, is labor. Garment making requires a huge amount of labor uh, to be made. It's one of the critical issues on the denim and garment industry. The amount of people required to make your garments, your jeans. On that process, on this garment making, we have emissions because we, are, we need energy and we generate residues that is um, the, main, the main part of what is called post-industrial uh, um, fabric for recycling. So all the uh, fabric which has been cut but not used for the garments can be recollected and transformed in new fibers to be recycled, to be recycled. And the warming works down, the same thing. We are combining water and chemicals to obtain the looks that we need. We're running machines that work on power. And again, is a step that requires a lot of labor. I mean, a lot of labor of people around machines, picking up the garments, sending the garments from one place to another in the, in the, in the factory, even, you know, scrapping, scratching, uh, ripping, all that is done normally by hand, even though that there are some new technologies that are helping to reduce the, the you know, the, the, the labor on that particular step. In here, we generate residues, again, fibers, we, we uh, generate a lot of effluents that can be extremely toxic at that time, depending on the type of chemicals that we have used. Emissions because of the energy and pollutants that, again, some of them can be um, quite nasty. And the garment finishing is the same thing. We need the water to value the softener or whatever other thing that we want to apply on the garment. And we need energy because, again, machines are, are working on power. And again, effluents, emissions and pollutants are the output. So this is a summary of uh, what you have seen so far. And the, not, the more crosses you see, the more X, Xs you see, the more um, sensitive uh, is, is a process, and the more focus must be put on to uh, solve, reduce the impact uh, of, the, of the activity in the, in the environment and, in the environment and human. Uh, so the picture is, yep. You see, there's a lot of work to be done to make things better. We are doing better, but it's not enough. We need to go on and make things better and better and better. So what happens, or what is the actual impact in terms of water? When we mention emissions, it's not only about water. We're talking about CO2, greenhouse gases, and other type of emissions uh, that need also need to be considered. But the focus now is, is more on the, on the water side. Um, there are different studies on the, on the, on the impact of making uh, goods or the impact of making denim. You, you will see on the, on, the, on, the, on the internet numbers ranging from 4,000 liters to 20,000 liters. 
the 11,000 letters that you see on the screen, this is from an, uh, an, a work done by uh, UNESCO IHE uh, some years ago, um, Professor Adrian Extra, which is a person that myself I admire for the work that he's doing on the water footprint side. And they calculated an 11,000 liters required for producing a pair of jeans. You know, one kilo of cotton is roughly uh, a pair of jeans um, men's size, okay? So the numbers now are probably coming down because of the implementation of new technologies, but we are still on a very high level. We, we will be somewhere close to 9,000 liters at the moment, but compared to what is required for cheese and eggs or milk is tremendous. Now you consider that in the world, the, the average figure of garments, denim garments produced is around 4 billion. So if you, calc if you, you know, estimate the, uh, the volume of water required to produce 4 billion of articles, denim articles, we are talking about a lot of water, a lot of clean water and a lot of effluent and waste water. By the way, and this is a message for those that, like myself, I like good meat. Uh, we have to look also <laughs> to uh, the, the amount of water required to make one, one kilo of, of meat. I mean, this is, this is tremendous. When I saw this the first time, I said, what? This, I need to do something. By the way, when I showed this to my daughter, she became a vegan. <laughs> Maybe I have to do the same. A one kilo of leather is the, this is the most pollutant and the most water consuming uh, article in the, uh, you know, in, in the whole industry, whatever. So behind the, the, the nice, the glamour, the, the nice advertising, the commercials, the, the, the celebrities, you know, that they are showing up, uh, the beauties of denim and the glamour of denim, there is a dark face. The dark face is still like this. The, the industry is still in some places like this. We are generating effluents, uh, waters that are dirty, nasty, and even dangerous hazardous sometimes. The labor that is required is not always uh, people with smiling faces in front of a wonderful high speed sewing machine. We, we are talking about forced labor, and we're talking about child labor, which is still uh, an, an issue has not been totally solved, totally you know, uh, tackled in the right way. Workers are exposed to chemicals and fumes and dangerous uh, chemicals. So this guy, for example, is wearing a mask, which is, well, currently wearing a mask is a standard, all right, for these bugs that we are floating on the air. But this guy is only wearing a mask, which is not the best for the work he's doing, and he's not wearing any protective clothes, which is very dangerous, it's very bad. So this is still going on. And the waste that we are generating from the, from the denim industry is huge. From this amount of denim, I told you, I mean, four billion uh, garments think that 25%, even to 30% sometimes, are corresponding to uh, materials that have been disposed or, uh, this is very sad, non-sold or barely sold, uh, non-used or barely used uh, garments. So we are dumping everything, the, what the, the, the waste is from the, from the process, but we are also dumping garments which have not been sold, and we are dumping garments that have been, have been used once or twice. And this is a consequence of the overconsumption and the lack of uh, uh, view on a long term of the, of the industry, which is something that we are working hard, the whole industry, the whole supply chain is working hard to tackle this up. So I think this is my last slide. Yes, it is. And now I just, you know, send uh, uh, my message to, uh, to Mosit to go on with the show. Thank, thank you. you. Um, thank you so much, like Miguel. That was so interesting. And I'm sure um, the people that have been seeing it already, already I've had a few people saying, can Miguel share, share these slides? I'm sure, you know, um, it's up to all of the individual speakers. Obviously, these are all your own presentations that you've done for us. But um, I'm sure there's a way of getting these slides as well. If you just ask like Miguel on the, on, like, on, 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 like the, on like the q and I'm sure like Miguel will, will be there and he'll, he'll share what he can. But um, I've got one or two questions. We've got about four minutes or so before we go on to the next speaker. But man, it's the water in every single process. It uses water, you know, and we, 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 we've all known that. But the fact that you need 11,000, as you said, obviously, these numbers are, they, fl they like fluctuate. You get 11,000, yeah, it's, it's, 
it's quite aggressive. But I was more interested by the fact that cheese uses 5,000 litres. So, you know, all those people that, that love cheese, that's also quite an interesting uh, thing there. You know, I feel my brother and my sister who, who live on cheese will be quite upset <laughs> hearing. But um, well, the, 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 the questions as well. Um, so of the whole processes of the water, obviously, every process uses water. But obviously, there are now tech technologies, especially in the weaving and also in the dyeing stages where there's like foam dyeing. There's every process engineers like yourself are looking into to try and make better. Right. That's that's what you guys are doing currently. Yes. Well, that, that's one thing most thing that has to be highlighted is that denim industry is extremely innovative and we're using high tech uh, possibilities like laser and plasma. So th this idea that denim is produced in a dirty, you know, hut somewhere using, you know, with dirty hands and using bad chemicals, this is not really the truth. Mm. But denim and textiles in general, fashion in general, but especially denim, is extremely innovative. And we embrace high technologies when they prove they are good for the, for the, for the production. So this is a, the, the worst case scenario, but fortunately things are moving to the a better, a more positive. Every process, right? It's like, it's so interesting because every, every three or four months, there's another innovation in the, in the processes. So that's what's fun for me as, as a younger designer. Obviously, I know I've got, I'm only 40 or so. I've got another 20 or 30 years left in this career. But it's interesting to see that every process, people are people like yourself are moving things forward. I've got two questions in the Q, Q, Q and a one, one from Serge. My question is, if jeans are consuming 11,000 litres of water, how much water is going back into the environment after cleaning? I guess most of it is evaporated, but... Um, well, not really. Um, no, not really. Okay, okay please. <laughs> no, well, uh, a large part of the water is used on the growing of the cotton. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, of course. What is required for the plant to grow. Uh, and some, um, the, 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 the cotton grows on, on around 6,000 6, to 7,000 litres of water. A part of the water it just evaporates, as you say. Some water is absorbed by the plant because the plant needs to grow. And some water on the plant is, uh, you know, is drained down the ground. Yeah. Uh, it goes to uh, uh, underground uh, water to be in principle uh, a, a, a reuse, reservoir for probably yeah but obviously but um obviously because obviously most of it is in the growing stage so i remember people always say but more than that can't be right and i went no but, but the cotton is a very thirsty plant and obviously the plant itself has been genetically mo 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 modified so much to try and get the best yields out of it right so that's also another thing so we are trying our best to come up with a cotton that not only is a, lo a lovely long staple, it, 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 it performs better in lots of different countries. So that's the kind of work that a lot of, a lot of people are doing as well. Another question as well from um, Ella, let's see what saying, will, will this recording be shared afterwards? Yes, it will be. Um, all the recordings are being filmed right now and hopefully over the weekend, we're gonna be uploading them on the Transformers website and as well as our Denim History One and, 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 and everyone else, but yeah. Um, They'll be they'll be uploaded within a few days. So yeah, that's all cool. Um, any other questions? I don't think so. We've got another. Oh, brilliant! Thank you, thank you. That's very very kind. Uh, Miguel, um, thank you again. Obviously, it's really it's seeing the whole process of things made. Obviously, these are just slides, and people people can and students can go online and, and see a lot of these processes. There's quite a lot of information out there, but it's fantastic to see everything in in the 20 minutes to understand how how much water and the processes. Obviously, it's very it's a big process making a pair of pair of jeans and. All of our other speakers are going to be highlighting different different aspects, but I thank you so much for your time this this morning.